I'm VA, Virginia Shank, and I'm a vocal artist, uh, primarily in the jazz realm. I sing everything from straight ahead into free improvisation. Um, what else? I love to do that. <laughs> and uh, kind of tell us uh, why we're here today. I know you have a big show coming up that we thought was very interesting. Uh, and we'd love to hear a little bit more about it. I so appreciate that. Yes. I am going to be celebrating International Jazz Day, which is uh, Monday, April 30th. Um, my, my celebration will be at City Winery in, in Atlanta. I'm excited to be at that venue. Um, International Jazz Day is a UNESCO event. That means the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization um, that has in has installed April 30th as International Jazz Day so that we hold that heritage of jazz um, as, as precious. And our jazz icon, Herbie Hancock, helped put that in place in about 2011. So this would be year seven. And um, what they do is um, the head of the International Jazz Day, they have a huge uh, concert at... Um, a city around the globe. This year it's St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, next year I think it's Sydney, Australia. Um, but meanwhile, there are ancillary events happening all around the globe. And if you go to the website, you can even see where people are having events to celebrate jazz. And this blows my mind because here we are in Atlanta, the capital of the South. Um, jazz was born here. Here. And um, I have goosebumps just, just saying that. And now all these events are taking place around the whole globe. That's just mm -hmm. incredible. So we're going to be celebrating that. And um, again, you said that's at City Winery that's going to be on. That's April right. Monday, April 30th, 8 o'clock. The doors will open at 6, you know, so come in and, um, you know, you can reserve seats ahead, which would be smart. Um, there are tables and chairs, um, mostly, um, but if for some reason last minute you, you may be able to scoot in, so come on, but the doors will open at six and we'll start the show at eight. Um, I'm going to have my regular band with me, which is fantastic. That's Kevin Bales on piano, Rodney Jordan on bass, Marlon Patton on drums and percussion. And then we're gonna have some guest artists because this is a party to celebrate International Jazz Day, of course, but I'm bringing in the best of some of my friends in Atlanta to celebrate with me. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, tell fun. you about that? <laughs> yeah, actually I do. <laughs> okay, sure. So um, we have a um, wonderful trumpet player who is actually from Cape Town, South Africa, but he graduated from the jazz department at Georgia State, Darren English. And he just won the Global Peace Award for a song that he composed that's on his debut album. So Darren will be sitting in with us um, on trumpet. And then we have on saxophone the iconic Kebby Williams, who um, most people know of him as he plays with Tedeschi Trucks Band, but he does many things. He just put on the event Music in the Park. He's so instrumental in our city of raising funds for uh, jazz education, and he gives and gives and gives. And not only that, but he's an amazing <laughs> saxophone player. And in fact, he guested on my last um, album, Amanato Maseka. Mm -hmm. So those two guys will be there. And... I have a voice talent coming in to do some spoken word, a guy named James Benson, who just, I heard his voice a few months ago and it knocked my socks off. Um, and then we're gonna have um, some guest artists coming through to really blow it out the water. So I'm gonna save that one for a surprise. Give them a little tease, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. You never know who's gonna show up too. So um, we're just, we're gonna have a blast. So um, what kind of music um, can we expect to hear from the, um, during the performances? Sure. So, of course, it's jazz, but as you're aware of, there are many kinds of jazz. Um, we'll do some straight-ahead tunes. We'll do some, um, probably two pieces from my last um, work, Amanada Moseka, which is an Abby Lincoln tribute. Mm -hmm. 
um, Abby was really great about lyrics and singing about a lot of things in life um, beyond just our jazz standards, um, the becoming our new jazz standards, which is fantastic. Um, do some civil activism and some social justice and a little little uh, close to the heart kind of things. Um, and then really blow it out of the water and celebrate. So we're going to get those horns blasting for you and get to out of your seat, probably. All right. Go all over the globe. <laughs> <laughs> you That's definitely will. You got Darren English there, right? <laughs> right? That's it. That's it. So um, for those who are not super familiar, you kind of give us a Catch us up to date, kind of how you, your journey from, um, you know, I know you're from Florida, but kind of catch us, yeah. us up on how you came from Florida into Georgia. Okay, so um, I guess it's an interesting um, path, but I grew up in Central Florida, um, you know, studied music in church and school and, you know, all that kind of business and um, from a family full of musicians. So I just, I don't know how not to have music in my life. Um, I went to Florida State, the School of Music, and um, graduated there. Then I, um, my degree actually was in music therapy, and um, but I would augment it with running over to the jazz department and running over to the ethnomusicology department, running the dance department, and um, you know, so the, all the arts are so important to me, and I think that infuses my own art making a lot. So I'm grateful that I, I did that. Um, but I got my first job in Macon, Georgia, and um, while I was there, um, I was working as a music therapist by, for my day job at the time, and sitting in at Jazz Jams downtown Macon at night, and there was a drummer there, um, and somebody said, oh, he's kind of famous, and I'm like, okay, you know, great, he's from a rock and roll band, but, you know, and I'm like, okay, great, I'm rolling my eyes, but can he play jazz? Well, this tur turned out to be J-Mo from the Allman Brothers Band, and um, yes, he can play jazz, and we became really, really great friends, and this is when my jazz learning on the streets really took hold, because he turned me on to um, more than academia, like here's how it works, you know, out, out on the, out on the road. And so I was in a band with him for a short time. Um, and, um, then I, you know, as happens to people, you fall in love and I followed, um, someone to Atlanta and, um, married and raised a family. But through the years, I, um, you know, would be performing a little bit. I kind of like, you know, did did a, a, a bump of, you know, performing and then, you know, family years kind of tied me down for a little bit, but I kept my finger in the waters. And then about 10 years ago, um, I was in a position to like, okay, I'm going back out now. You know, the kids can take care of themselves and, and mom's on her way. So um, I really started hitting it hard. Um, um, 10 years ago, about 2010, recorded that first CD in 2011. Um, it came out in 2012, another one in 2015, and then the, my last project that came out last year. So um, I've been really blessed and, and I, boy, nailed a really fabulous band from day one. I just, I can't believe it. And they're still with me and we just, we have a blast. So, and then I travel all over. Um, you know, I, I may work with other bands. I have a world band I work with out of Asheville. Um, but anyway, you know, off to Italy the end of May and so. Well, what what is it about jazz that kind of kept you coming back? I know because you kind of started in it. You had a whole another life where you became a, a, a family woman and raising kids, but then you just had to come back to what is it about it? That, that yeah, just... well, and, and I would say even when I was raising a family, you know, I was working and teaching music and doing music therapy and um, singing, of course. Um, but I have worked in lots of genres, but the jazz thread um, holds strong. Um, number one, it's so satisfying. <laughs> So I think that's probably the biggest thing is that it speaks to my soul. And because of the art form, the way it is, it, it has a structure that provides a really grounded platform, but then there's so many ways to be creative within that. And, um, 
I get bored really fast. So if I learn a song, I'm not doing it the same way twice. I mean, we got to change it up. And so, um, so that, you know, speaking from the soul, um, being able to work with it as an art form, um, delving back to its roots. Um, it, you know, if the songs are, they don't go away and that's, they stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, that is something to celebrate. So I, it's just hooked me ever since day one. It, you know, I've got a picture of myself as a little girl um, holding a, a cheerleader baton, you know, as a microphone singing, I'm a jazz baby, you know, at like age seven. I mean, you know, my house was full of music and I just, my dad was a swing dance uh, winner, you know, just. Oh, really? So do you swing dance as well too? A little bit, a little bit, not as well as my father, but <laughs> he was great. Now, have your kids caught the bug too? Are they musicians or into um, jazz? What do they think about their mom being a jazz? Yeah, I know, right? Um, so, um, actually, I have a daughter who is a singer. She's more of a classical singer. Um, she's a fabulous musician and following that and um, becoming a music therapist and a counselor as well as a performer. So, she's, she's armed and ready for the musician world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now, as a as studying uh, as a uh, musical therapist, now have you been able to use that at all? Is that something you just kind of put to the side, or? Oh no, I um, I practiced for many years. I haven't now since I've really emerged, you know, uh, performing um, on the forefront. Um, I counsel some. I keep my license. Um, I do teach. Um, some workshops through the year on voice as a metaphor for self-learning and wellness kind of things. Um, but I used to work in psychiatric and hospitals and kids with special needs, etc. cetera. Um, I don't really have time for that now. I'm performing um, and working my art in other ways. So um, it's still in me. It's part of who I am. And I think it makes my song choices um, more pertinent for myself. So, you know, what I'm singing, it's important that there be powerful meaning behind it because music is powerful. Because you're still a healer at heart too, right? Apparently. Well, that's, yes. Thank <laughs> you for those words. Um, yes, I would agree with you. Oh, that's, that's super cool. So if you guys out there need some spiritual uplifting, make sure you come to this concert on, on, <laughs> on April 30th at City Winery. Uh, speaking of which, you know, we kind of talked about a little bit about, you know, what you're going to be featuring. I know you said earlier, um, you mentioned to me before we got on air, that you will be performing music from your um, latest song, um, your latest CD, rather. I would yeah. pronounce the name of it, but I, I, I think you do it a lot better than I do. Okay, it's called Amanata Moseka. Okay. It's an Abby Lincoln tribute, and Abby was one of our uh, jazz legends um, who died in uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, she, she, I, oh, I just adore her music, and she's a great lyricist, writing all about um, just the the breadth of life experience. So, I have been singing her songs for a long time, and finally decided to do a tribute to her. So, um, Amanata Moseka is um, a title she was given when she was traveling through Africa back in her day. Amanata means mother of the Christ child. Moseka means goddess of love. So she took that name on for a while as a performance name and as her publication name. And I just love how it sounds, Amanata Moseka. I mean, it just sounds royal and important and it is. So um, um, I'm glad that I could honor her by naming the title that. So. Um, yes, yeah, so Kebby Williams actually guested with me on a tune called The River, so we will probably most likely be doing that. Um, I don't want to give it all away, but we'll probably do another tune um, from that um, CD. Um, but then, you know, we're going to, as I said, we'll, we'll do some standards and some activist tunes and you know, just, it'll be a, ver a nice variety. For now, what, what kind of sparked the interest in doing uh, uh, a tribute to Abby Lincoln? I know she's a, a wonderful vocalist, a great jazz legend, but uh, why did that speak in particular more to you to do, to focus on that song? On that? Um, you know, I mean, it just evolved over time. Um, I actually, on my first CD, I did two 
uh, of her pieces and I questioned myself even when we went to record. And then when I realized we had set the recording date and um, it was the first anniversary of her death. And I, so I took that as an omen. I'm always looking for meaning and synchronicity and destiny. And so even at that time, it felt like destiny. And I said, okay. And then I did another one of hers on my second um, CD because it's, they're just such great songs to sing. And, and so that, oh, you know, and then what happened is somebody in North Carolina asked me to do a tribute show um, and a, a theme. And I had in the back of my mind thought if I were asked to do that, I might do one on Abby. And so I said, okay. And, and her stuff's not easy. I took a year to develop the show. And then after I did the show, I went, okay, well, we should record this because it's so fabulous. <laughs> so that's how that happened. Yeah. So you got a chance to really concentrate on it and kind of really get it down. And after that, you said, well, you know, we should go let everybody hear this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, um, you know, and, and I think that's how art should grow out of, you know, what's fueling your fire next. And sometimes it's looking behind you to see where the foot, footprints are. You go, oh, yeah, that's what I, that's what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of fueling the fires, like I know you have this CD out and you have the concert coming up. But is there anything that you are kind of feeling that you may want to work on coming up that, you know, that's kind of intriguing you right now? Well, um, a lot of originals. And actually, I'll be doing a few originals. I didn't mention that. Um, so, uh, you know, as many artists, we don't always want to let the cat out of the bag, you know, before it happens. And in fact, it, it feels sort of like being pregnant and you can't really show it yet, you know, so it needs to incubate a little longer. Um, well, I guess from more of a broader perspective, like where do you see yourself going musically? You know, where yeah, well, th so then I would go back to, you know, writing more of my own material. Okay. Um, that's the biggest thing I would think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and just doing more of what I get to do. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to checking you out at um, City Winery on uh, Monday, April Fabulous. 30th. For Great. those who are interested in uh, coming checking you out, how can they purchase some tickets? You bet. Well, go to the City Winery Atlanta um, website. It's probably the fastest. Um, if you want to look at my website, you sure can. Um, it'll give more information on me. Um, but get those tickets, City Winery Atlanta, right there in Midtown. It's, you know, it serves everybody, you know, in the city and a nice um, new venue for us to have. Yeah, it's a great venue. Great venue. I, I really enjoy yeah. um, being there the, the times I've been able to attend. Yeah. Uh, for those who are interested in maybe checking out some of your music um, that we talked about a little bit, how can they uh, find, find your music? Absolutely. Well, you can find me on all the usual platforms, YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, Facebook, uh, you know, all those usual things. Um, but my last name is tricky to spell. So it's Virginia. Um, and last name is S-C-H-E-N-C-K. So virginiashank.com. Um, and if you lose that, can't follow that thread, Call my friends at Best of Atlanta Concerts. That's right. We'll, we'll definitely forward you to the right place. Perfect. And, um, just um, a, a small note, um, Virginia has, this is a third CD, right? It's your third CD? Yeah. yeah. You have um, the Abby Lincoln option, and you have a couple more of the other options you can check out. Yeah, my first one that came out was just called VA. That's another name that I use, VA, Virginia Shank. And the second one is called Interior Notions. Okay. So you All can right. look that up as well. VA and Interior Notions. There you go. Yeah. Make sure you check it out. Thank you, Virginia, for joining us. I appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Have a great day.